Hi everyone, this is Callie. Thanks for being here with me today. I have such a fun project to share with you today and I'm excited to get started. We have these embroidery hoop ornaments that I created from lots of different Lawn Fawn products. So before we get started, I just wanted to show you a close up of what we're doing. I have these four inch embroidery hoops that I've decorated with a plethora of Lawn Fawn dies and stamped images. So we'll start out here by introducing the stamp sets that I'm using. Here we have Yeti or Not. And then we have winter skies and I'll just be using a few images from each to create my scenes. And then we have this favorite toboggan together set as well as the here we go a waddling set. So again from each set I'm just going to stamp enough images to create one small scene for that little four inch hoop that we have. From the Yeti or Not set I've got these two Yetis and a Christmas tree as well as a scarf and a gift. And then from the winter sky set, I have two little pine trees, the polar bears looking up at the sky with the Santa sleigh going by, and then the toboggan together set. I used the deer images because we were gonna use the penguin images from the Here We Go a Waddling set. So I'm gonna use the same colors for all of the images to keep things nice and simple. If you want the color combinations, you can pay close attention to the caps at the top of the screen. It is going really fast. Or you can go head over to the coordinating blog post for a list of all the color combinations. So for these penguins, for the Here We Go A Waddling set, I am using some cool grays. And then we will lightly color the inside portions of the penguins with very light cool gray tones. I never leave things solid white, so I always add a little bit of color. Even if you can barely see it, it really does make an impact on your images. So I'm using a rainbow of colors on all of my images to keep it nice and colorful. So after I'm done with this stamp set, I'm gonna go ahead and work on my other stamped panel. And I'll start here with the deer. I won't show the process on the other deer, but it's all the same. I'm laying down the darkest color first, applying a medium color just over that dark color and then blending it all out with a lighter tone. And if I need to, I'll blend again with the medium then the light. With that lightest color taking up approximately 75% of the image, I would say. That creates a nice light body, nice highlight, if that's the style of coloring that you're going for. There are lots of different styles of coloring, so I'm not saying this is the way to color, it's just how I do it. So I wanted to share that process in case you're interested and curious about it. So I'm working on my Yeti now. They can be grays or blues or purples, um, lots of different colors that you can use depending on how whimsy you want your coloring to be. I decided to make my Yetis a soft light blue and then for their faces and little horns, I did a light gray. So on the polar bears, I'm doing the same thing. I could have done light grays as well, but I decided to keep my markers uh, the same colors as the Yetis just to make everything a little bit more cohesive. And then I'll finish with the scarves with a bright red. And I feel like these pops of reds really tie all of the ornaments together with the bows that I'm going to put on them and the sentiments that I'm going to be using. So here we have some four inch embroidery hoops. I got these off Amazon, but you can find them at local craft stores as well. I just bought them in bulk in a set of 10, and that way I can make more if I want to at another time. So I have a circle stackable die here, and they're slightly bigger than the inside of our embroidery hoop. So that's gonna create backgrounds for us, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna ink blend four different color combinations, and I won't show it all in the entire video. It's just a lot of the same ink blending techniques. But in the next screen, I'll be able to show you what colors were used, so you can take a screenshot if you want, or again, you can rely on the coordinating blog post for more information. And so now I'm gonna take this circle stackable die and I'm gonna die cut all four rounds out of these ink blended panels. Then I'll splatter them with white paint to mimic some snow and then I'll move them so that I can clean off my work surface before we start the next step in the process. Okay, so now I wanna create some snow drifts for my background to create each of my scenes. I have two of the border dies from the Stitched Hillside Border set, and I'm just gonna die cut the more wavy one higher for the back, and then a little smaller slope or hillside for the front, and then we'll use that same circle stackable die that we used to cut out those rounds and die cut these pieces. 
So if you're bulking like I am and making four at a time or more, it's gonna be a little bit time consuming to die cut all of these pieces, but I prepped beforehand so it was very easy to go ahead and put together. I used some residual ink on my blue blending brush and just brushed a little bit of blue color at the top of the snowdrifts. And then the higher, more wavy uh, snowdrifts, I am applying directly onto those backgrounds. And then the front snowdrifts are going to be glued to the front of our embroidery hoops. To adhere my backgrounds to these embroidery hoops, I'm using some liquid adhesive and I'm adding the adhesive to the inner ring of these embroidery hoops and then attaching my background. You can line it up from the back or the front, it doesn't really matter, and then I'm just using a big acrylic block to help me hold those pieces down while they're curing. And I'll go and do that to all four, so we'll be repeating a lot of steps. And once I'm done with all four hoops, I'm gonna go ahead and work on those little snow drifts on the front of or the top of the embroidery hoops. So for this, I'm using some liquid glue again on the backside of those snow drifts since we don't know how far they're gonna extend on the embroidery hoop. So I'm doing it the other way around. You can do it that way for the background too if you'd like. Okay, so all of our snow drifts are in place. I have the scalloped circle stackables here that I am going to die cut some pixie dust cardstock out of, and we're gonna create a nice little frilly border for our ornaments. And then I have Christmas garland and the large wreath die sets, and I'm gonna die cut some of these holly, I think, or their mistletoe leaves, and some dark pink bows to decorate our ornaments. So I did some prepping before I started filming. I have my pixie dust scallop circles, as well as some foliage that I die cut in two different greens, cilantro and noble fir. And then for the bows, I die cut out of raspberry cardstock. So using some liquid adhesive, again, I attached my scallop circles to the back of my ornaments. And now I'm just creating my bows and putting them together. I'm using this Sizzix forming tool and that helps me curl the bows so that I don't create any unnecessary bends and folds in the bow while I'm trying to manipulate and curl them back. I'm using some mini adhesive dots to attach the bow curls and then I'll go ahead and loop that center wrap around the bow and then secure it with a bit of liquid adhesive. And then I'm gonna use my little reverse tweezers to help hold that in place while it dries. And then finally, I am using another dot adhesive to adhere those tails onto the bows itself. So once I have all four done, I can start constructing my little scenes for each ornament, and then we can decorate our ornament with those foliage and the bows that we created. Okay, so now I'm gonna start creating my scenes. And for a lot of these images, they're just gonna be hanging over this embroidery hoop. So I'm gonna be stacking some foam adhesive to match the height of the embroidery hoop so that we don't get any saggy images or warping from storage. I definitely plan on using these ornaments on my Christmas tree every year. So I hope that this is a project that's gonna last for a long time. So I wanna make sure that it's created with some quality and assurance that it will last for years to come. So in total, I have six layers of foam adhesive. So I just stacked my little rectangles of foam that I cut from my foam roll and just stacked them up and used them underneath the images that sat at the top of my embroidery hoops. Now that my scene is created, I can go ahead and attach my floral or foliage spray at the top of my ornament. And you'll see I have three different lengths of sprigs and I've stacked them so that I have dark, medium, and then dark again with the longer sprigs at the bottom and then the shortest sprigs at the top. And then I'll cover up where the ends meet with the bow. So that's one ornament down, and then we have three more to go. So I'll just quickly create these little scenes. Here we're working on the toboggan together images. I have the sleigh string that I'm gonna attach to the sled, and then attach that to the back of the deer that's dragging his friend. So I'll go ahead and attach that to our little snow drift, and I've already attached the six stacked foam adhesive to the back of each of those deer. And then we'll work on these Yeti, there's just a simple tree in the background and then the Yeti have their scarves and presents in hand. And I think this one's gotta be my favorite. I just love the lamp posts and these three little penguins singing their Christmas carols. Okay, 
So I've gone ahead and finished all of my scenes and attached all of my foliage, and now we're gonna work on a sentiment. I have the mice on ice set, and I love this word joyful. I love it because I can stamp and emboss it, as well as die cut for a coordinating die, and then we can attach it over the top of our ornaments. And I'm gonna go ahead and emboss this with white embossing powder. I'm just heat setting it now, and then I'll die cut all four off camera. You can use any sentiment strips that you'd like. I just really love this joyful word and I think it coordinates perfectly with all of these sentiments. So I'm using some liquid adhesive and adhering, adding some adhesive anywhere I think will adhere to the images for more stability and support like at the top of that Yeti's head. And on this polar bear one, I am attaching it to the bottom. I didn't wanna cover up the Santa sleigh at the top. And I'll do the same with the other two. Now I have these mini snowflakes and I've die cut them using pixie dust cardstock for some added shimmer and shine and I'm just going to attach them all over my ornaments in various places. And before we go any further, I should probably say that this project was completely inspired by a gift that I received by my friend Lee Ann West a few years back. She gave me an ornament similar to this and I just love it so much and when I pulled it out of my storage box this year to put on my tree I just thought I need to create something like this because it's so much fun and it's such a great project and a great gift if you decide to make this for your friends. So I am using some Stickles Moon Dust Gel here. I know that Stickles comes in little bottles and if you have that, you can surely use it. I just thought it would be easier to create little clumps of snow at the bottom of my scenes and on my foliage, I'm just kind of brushing it on with my media spatula. So I'll do that on all four. Again, I'm just grabbing some paste and I'm just adding little clumps of it at the bottom of my scenes and then kind of brushing it on to the foliage at the top. Just creates a lot of shimmer and shine, some glittery bits. And then last but not least, I'm gonna add some little clear confetti sequins. I am putting them over the center of some of my snowflakes and at the bottom of my scenes and on the sides where I've added some paste and it'll just stick to the paste. I know that this project is very elaborate and there's a lot going on, but just imagine how beautiful this is gonna look on any Christmas tree. Anyone you gift these to, or even if you decide to keep them, they're gonna love this project and they're gonna cherish all the effort that you put into it, not to mention how fun it is to create and put together. I'm so happy with how they turned out. So now that all four of our scenes are created, I just need to attach some hangers so that they can be used as ornaments. I have four strands of twine and I'm just tying a loop at the end after looping them together. And then I'm gonna feed them through the back of that embroidery hoop screw. And then I'll use my tweezers to pull them through the hoop and then attach them so that they're secured onto those the metal brackets. And that will complete your ornament. Now, right now it's still kind of wet, so you can hold off and string it once everything is dry. But for the purpose of this video, I'm trying to be very careful not to get some of that stickles, moon dust gel all over my hands. And there you have it, four embroidery hoop ornaments created from a multitude of Lawn Fawn products. I hope you enjoyed this project. Thanks for stopping by and have a wonderful holiday season. Bye everyone. 